as you know, as you told before, I'm both board orthopedic and and plastic surgery, uh, and I'm the chairman of Hand Trauma Committee and president of the European Society. So what I am uh, telling you is really my job. I start my life in Torino in the trauma center, and my mentors are Dr. Battistone. All cases you see are done in this center when I, I start to, to do my, my job in hand surgery and my love in microsurgery. And I had, uh, um, I was lucky because I met uh, Professor Brunelli. I started with him to fall in love of this job. This is what you know about Torino and this is what you know about Milan. All we know that replantation was a dream of all surgeons, and we had a report of the first transplantation, 260 post Christ, and the microsurgery born in 1960 with Jacobson with the microscope and the instruments, first arm replantation in 62, Kleinert in 63, revascularization of long finger, first hand replantation, 63, uh, 64, first leg replantation, Tamai, 68, the first replantation of long finger, Tanuti, first thumb replantation, and Brunelli in 1973 in Italy. He was the founder of our microsurgical society and he was an orthopedic surgeon dedicated to hand surgery and all you know him and he did the first arm replantation in Italy. So all we know the differences between replantation revascularization. I will talk about upper limb replantation but lower limbs is another chapter. 95% of replantation are done by in the upper limb only 5% in the lower limb uh, there are different function, lower leg works very, very well with some prosthesis. For the lower leg, we have a score system that is normally easy. We had our score system, you give a, a score and then you can contraindicate or indicate the replantation. This is our score system. All we know that uh, with the prosthesis, uh, you can recover very fast. Uh, you are, diminished number of complications, diminished number of operation, you can really have a very good life. Well, the upper limb is a little bit different. And this night I talk about indication and strategy. I start with the strategy, with general surgical rules. Then I talk about indication, about the level, the condition, how to conserve the, 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 the piece and the timing. Then the third part of the talk is about uh, special things, spare parts, arthrotopic and ectopic replantation, and emergency free flap. General surgical rules. This is very elementary, but I have to do that. The key of surgery is to remove all that tissue. So elementarization, this was described by Brunelli in remove all dead tissue, debridement, bone shortening. We have to arrive with our vessel and structure. This is very important. Fast and stable fixation. It's important that the patient move immediately as always in our job. If we have a big segment, it's possible to do a washout uh, to do faster procedure and permit to do also the replantation after some times. Always is compulsory to cover nobile structures at the end of the operation. We cannot leave our sutures to the air. And if we can, we can do all if one procedures, if it's possible. At the end of the operation, you have to remember fasciotomies that are very, very important. When we do microsurgery, Normally, we say that we do one artery and two veins. Much better two arteries and more veins, but this is the minimum we have to do. So, debridement is very is the key, 
and if we do bright very well, our results are very, very better. And uh, the, for the bonus fixation, for the upper limb in big segment replantation, plates are perfect. And for small segment, key wire is the, the, what normally we use, but and the medullary screw is growing because are in, into the bone and the patient can move immediately. So we have better result. So Kiwar, but circles, plate, and endometrial screws for small segment are very, very nice and indicated. I tell you that uh, prosthesis can use in uh, MP joint uh, in crush injury. So the suture has all we know for strands, for uh, all tendons. Uh, it's obvious that we have many, many, many tendons. We have to do all this suture very well. Uh, tongue suture, I think that uh, in zone two is uh, compulsory. What is necessary for the vascular reconstruction? One artery, two veins. Normally the veins are dorsal, but in small, small segment, sometimes we, we need to do some volar veins. Microsurgery, perfect technique, never touch the vessels. This is the key to our success. You do not have to touch the vessels only the adventitia and your suture should be perfect clamp time is crucial you cannot leave the clamp there for one hour if you are not really fast you do a perfect suture and the suture doesn't work so in microsurgery as you know you cannot accept compromise and mistake are not acceptable sometimes you have to do as i told you volar vein but normally are dorsal vein and if we can do cannot do our veins we have leeches and dripping bleeding after for small segment can be very useful temporary chance when we are need to be in hurry and we are in big segment we cannot put uh, the life of the patient uh, so we have to face the life of the patient. We can wash out the catabolize with temporary shunt and then do the reconstruction and the vein. This is a good way when we have, we are, we will see later a six hour, four, six hour of cold ischemia for big segment. Nerve cooptation, few words, all nerve should be done immediately if it's possible. If we have uh, avulsion injury, we cannot do that. We can redo that uh, uh, afterwards. But uh, if we can, we have to do all in the first procedures. Uh, when it's not easy to judge the level in, uh, in emergency, in mixed nerve, we can use tubulization. And uh, tubulization in emergency is possible for mixed nerve. Then you restore the anatomy. If it works, it's okay. If it doesn't work, you can come back later and put your nerve graft, but the anatomy is restored. So this is what we use in Italy to do a tubulization. It's very cheap and no industry are happy of that, but it works very well. It's a vein and the muscle. We put the muscle into the vein and we do a, a little tubes that can be useful. Very nice for sensory nerve up to two, three, two, three centimeters in emergency in uh, blunt uh, mixed nerve injury. This is the case, blunt injury. We do not know how to, to cut the nerve. You, we are not sure where is the damage of the nerve. We put up the tube, we, we wait. Then if it works, in this case works, you cannot, we have not to come back. So this is very important to cover at the end all your suture and uh, don't press the vessel you did. Now, after this uh, brief introduction, I talk about which are the indication in upper limb. The lecter is done, that is in green, our absolute indication, in red, absolute contraindication, and uh, the gray zone uh, is in the middle. So if we see the anamnestic data and clinical evaluation, 
we see that uh, with which part of the limb we can replant. If you see, all is green. The only th things that is uh, uh, red and orange is a single long finger in zone two. So the zone two, where the two tendons are together, this is could be a contraindication. I will talk about that uh, after a few minutes. And uh, I don't think it's really a contraindication. I think that depends from the surgeon. If you are, are a very good surgeon, you are able to do this kind of surgery very well, I think the result is very nice. If you are not really um, ex expert, you can have really a stiff finger, unuseful during the day and painful and uh, stiff and painful during the winter. So it depends, in my opinion, from the surgeon. About the age, child, we have always to replant child. It's, we know that. For old people, we will say some cases that you cannot say this is eight years old, we, we throw away all. No, you can attempt and many times work very well. Obviously, the life of the patient has to be saved. So, which are the problem? Um, work and sex, musician, manual workers. Yes, we can do differences between the works and the sex, but uh, this is not so compulsory. Pre existing illness, these are problem. We cannot operate uh, if the patient has an uh, anesthesiological risk, is a, if there is a contraindication to microsurgery. Tabages, alcoholism, and automutilation, in my mind, we can talk about that later, is not really a contraindication. About the, the ischemia time, small segment up to 24 hours of cold ischemia, but up to 48, 72, many reports are of, uh, done of small segment replanted in upper limb. We risk only the segment. We do not risk the patient, the life of the patient, so we can do our attempt also after a long time. For big segment, this is very, very important, our decision. Up to six hours of cold ischemia, we cannot replant because in this way, we really, really uh, can uh, make a, a great problem to our patient. Uh, we didn't have any dead in our department for that reason, but uh, you can do a revascularization problem for the patient. All catabolites arrive into the kidney and you can put in, uh, the patient can die. So the dominant side, I think not important. Patient motivation, I don't think it's so important. Never saw a patient to say, throw away my piece, I don't want that index finger. So I don't think in emergency, the patient motivation is an issue. Now I told about the timing for big segment, we have to be very strict. How to conserve and preserve our piece. All, I think you know that, but I do very quickly. A wet goes uh, for the pieces, then we put in a plastic bag, then you close the plastic bag and you put all in ice and water. Never direct contact with ice, never direct contact with water. These things, if are not be done, really can contraindicate our replantation. So kind of mechanism. Neat guillotine is much better than multiple levels, but if you see here, nothing is really red. There is some sometimes the possibility to do our replantation is much better with local crush is better than an avulsion, but I, you will see that uh, avulsion injury can be replanted and attempted. Big segments are much easier, small segments are more difficult, but uh, the small segments, uh, sorry, uh, big segments start from the wrist and small segments are 
from the wrist to the fingers. Why zone two is so difficult? We know all the problem we have for a suture in zone two. Imagine a suture of the flexor, the, the nerves, the artery, the extensor, the synthesis. So normally you, you can think that you have a stiff finger. So in this zone, normally we do only one tendon, the profundus tendon, and uh, we try to do an internal synthesis. So in that way, you can have very good results also in zone two. The best zone for the tip of the finger is the zone one. We have only one flexor tendon. It works very well. It's difficult, but uh, if you are lucky, like in this patient, the results is very good. So now I show you some absolute cases of indication, absolute contraindication and relative indication. Some cases that uh, you can say, no, it's not possible. And I show you that we tried and sometimes we are happy. So at the end of the lecture, uh, we talk about finger bang concept. So about uh, uh, mangled hand, how to use pieces. And sometimes in this kind of surgery, it's important to have the emergency free flap. You have to cover some structure. If you do not have local tissue, you can use emergency free flap. So absolute indication, child, thumb, multidigital, transmetacarpal, wrist, forearm, arm, and the globin injury, these are all absolute indication. This is a child, four years old, very difficult. The, the synthesis is done by a needle of, uh, and four point of four stitches of uh, 11, zero, one artery, no veins. If we are lucky, the patient heal very, very well. Distal to the flexor superficialis uh, is a perfect zone to replant. This is a double, level and uh, uh, you see the first operation in child often we have many operation after the first one this is uh, the results of the end after some years this is a gold meat neat lead cut absolute indication i think if it works uh, you have really a very good results if you cannot do microsurgery, you can put back your finger like a composite graft. This is was described by Hirase and with cooling or repositioning. I think it works very well in young patient. This patient was 19 years old. And uh, if you see, it works uh, a little bit also in adult. Thumb. Absolute indication. We have to try every thumb we have, we have to try. Uh, we can say, no, it's not replantable or only if it's meshed. Otherwise, we have to try. And normally it gives very, very good results with a good sensibility. Not always uh, the movement is perfect, but uh, the thumb is very, very important. Also, if we have the thumb with other fingers, you see, all in one procedures, all was uh, replanted and revascularized, and this patient with one operation came back to his previous work. Now, why in zone two, with old technique, Kishner Y uh, stop the patient, doesn't move? This is the results. These are two stiff digits, it's good results for that time but uh, is not what we can have nowadays. So this is the worst lesion you can have in the hand. No way to restore intrinsic muscles. So despite of the same surgeon, despite of uh, beautiful equip, you have uh, no intrinsic muscles function, but something better than nothing. This is the patient that cut longitudinally the hand. You think uh, is impossible, not very difficult, and uh, 
losing one finger, you can have a very functional hand. I stop here and I say that for all our guests, this is the best way to cut your hand. If you have to choose which is the way, which is the level, this is perfect. This five centimeter proximal to the wrist, you can put one plate, is you have the tendons, you have no muscles, the two nerves, very big, vessel as big. So with this kind of cut that is neat, with one operation, you can have a hand that is normal. And this patient came back to work at six months. Is much better than some carpal tunnel that <laughs> had problem in my in my hand. So this is a bilateral harm replantation. One replantation and one other is uh, a revascularization. This was done by Dr. Battiston and Dr. Pontini many years ago in the CTO. So all levels are indicated. Which are the absolute contraindication? general high risk of anesthesiological uh, or surgical risk or if there is a local problem impossibility to replant extensive crash avulsion contamination prolonged ischemia bad conservation these are the things we we, we, we told a few minutes ago this is really not possible and now about relative contraindication. This is what I think that the surgeon can make the difference. So age, associated lesion, double lesion, tabagism, psychiatric automutilation, alcoholism, drug, systemic pathology, coagulation problem. These are relative contraindication. And other relative are crush, multiple level, avulsion, prolonged ischemia of small segment. Uh, I saw, I tell that because I saw in my uh, going around the world, some surgeon much better than me that did beautiful things. Dr. Professor Wang showed us some years ago that you can uh, freeze a piece and then come back and replant it and i i, I saw double level uh, of four fingers move perfectly so it's not me but uh, to say that always is the surgeon to decide which is the indication i show you some cases of unusual indication that uh, i did in in the past 82 years old man circular show so no other comorbidities why not replant this is not perfect but is much better than a prosthesis and nothing double level 60 years old i think that this end with two fingers is better than nothing this is a very nice case i stop a little bit i slow down 45 years old is not a double level, but it's two, two pieces of uh, hand, thumb and hand. These are together or plastic and orthopedic problems. Plastic is aesthetic, orthopedic and soft tissue, orthopedics, biomechanics and bone. This is the case that is really orthoplastic reconstruction. Uh, you see, it uh, is loose, completely the wrist, so we have to put directly the metacarpus on the radius and what you see are orthopedic and plastic strategy during the operation i go on and i show you a fusion with the extension of the metacarpus of 45 degree and the microsurgery for the hand then we put back the thumb we have to do we have to know all hand surgery for that cases. We do a well be suspension plasty for the, the thumb to have some movement. Then at the end, we do obviously the replantation of the thumb. Then at the end, the opponent plasty because we have no tenor masses. So extensor property of indices 
in that uh, way, then we have to close all this big hole and uh, we do an uh, adipofascial flap based on the perforator of the radial artery at the end. So I think that in these cases, for young surgeon is all we need to do replantation and uh, this kind of surgery. All orthopedic principle, biomechanics, all in one procedures, and all uh, and also the plastic part. This is the result at the end. This guy every every uh, years uh, come back to see us uh, that uh, he is very happy. Came back to his work. This is a, a Kleinberg after 12 hours of ischemia time, but it's not really a big segment. You see that this is not the perfect level than before, and the results is less beautiful, but it, very useful at the same time. This is a revascularization of two fingers after 72 hours. All avulsion injury of ring avulsion are compulsory to replant. The only type 4B could be not replanted. This is 4A, very nice result. This is a 4B and the result is not so beautiful, but for a woman is better than nothing. In the book, we have this. So in the night, if we don't want to replant, if we have uh, our wife that uh, is always saying us that we are always away from out of house so we can write in our paper there are there is a ribbon sign there is a red line sign we cannot do our replantation then we can go at home our wife we are happy but if we have time we have no wife and we are very very uh a microsurgeon that try to replant all things and we know that because in the thumb always we are in this situation and we know that with some tricks we can replant that uh, i think that we can try i show you some cases this is an avulsion of three finger to give a tripodal pinch we can replant also this finger this is another avulsion the brachial plexus is a harm. First time, second time with a latissimus dorsi. And at that moment, I do not know in the future, something is better than nothing. And this is the case I really love. You see, it's a, a, a girl that had this accident. This is the axilla, this is the shoulder. These are the nerves, are, it's like a brachial plexus avulsion. We know that it's much more difficult to close this hole than replant. If we clean perfectly, as I told before, if we do the elementarization, if we do all our nerve surgery immediately, and we did some muscle neurotization directly with the nerves, you will see the biceps of this uh, girl in a few minutes, we can replant, we can close our hole, we put a plate, as I told before, and sometimes this is much more easier than close this hole. This is 18 months later, it's a good function, a beautiful biceps, pronosubination and extension of the wrist. This is, I think, incredible, and if you are into the sixth hour, I think we have to attempt. Always good results. No, no, we have no always good results. This is a young guy, avulsion, 17 years old, is a young, we have to try, we put it back, it works, two, three operation, the plexus, the skin graft, and at the end we have no function. A replantation with no function is nothing that we want, and uh, this guy doesn't want to uh, cut the arm and he stay like that, but he has, after four surgery, no function at all. In the glowing injury, 
we have to try. All arteries are at the level of the EPP joint, and in this case, it was very young, these guys, we did nine arterial suture, three vein graft, four dorsal vein, but this tissue, it seems to suffer initially, but at the end, it's much better than another kind of reconstruction. So try always to replant the glowing injury. So I discuss this first part, then I go to conclude with two uh, topics that I think are very important. Indication and results generally depends from the experience and the creativity of the surgeon. These are the two topics, bang finger and free flap in emergency. This is what we want from a hand. Uh, Carlos asked to me to, to talk about strategy. Strategy means we need to have a tripodal pinch with a normal length, normal sensation, and with a functional thumb. This, I think, that is the definition of Paco Pignal. Uh, that is very, very good. This is what uh, we, we need. The plan of reconstruction is to have an acceptable hand and use all things we have. So we have to, when we start to do a replantation or a magnet hand, we have to, to, to understand what is to prefer, to preserve, to left in place, what is to damage, what is impossible to use, but put all things on the table. Then we can use all these things to restore the function and the aesthetic, to have a tripodal pinch. Heterotopic reimplantation, this is very important. We, we have to leave the first web space that is big to have uh, the possibility to do the opposition. And this is a uh, big why we, if we cannot replant in the same position a finger, it's better to replant not near the thumb. So all tissue are important, and this tissue can be viable or not viable. Viable, we can uh, do our microsuture and or turn the, as a flap, or not viable skin, nail, tendon, nerves, or is useful to restore mm -hmm. other part. I show you some cases. The most classical is the index for the thumb. In this case, was not replanted, but was like a, a flap. This is polycization in emergency of a 60 years old lady. This is free index for the thumb. This is the second for the third, because uh, the third meta Carpophalangeal joint was good, so we use that joint and we enlarge the first web space. And this is a very nice case done by Bruno Battiston. And this is a big bilateral crush amputation and lower leg amputation. So this, this man is without limbs and he replanted two fingers. It was very important for him to eat, to drink, but much more to smoke. And these are not my cases, but it's important that I show you that. If it's not possible to replant uh, a part, uh, you can park this part in another uh, ectopic place, then you can replant after when the situation is uh, going better. And this is another case uh, parked on the foot. So last topic, last chapter, uh, emergency free flap. We know that uh, the microbial contamination is growing day by days after the trauma. I think, and many surgeons think, that uh, it's important to close immediately our wound. And uh, many of our fracture are infected by our hospital and not by the trauma. So if we clean perfectly and we close, I think we have much more possibility 
do not have infection. So to do not have infection, we have to do an oncological debridement, as I told you before, and the oncological debridement has to be done from the most experienced surgeon in the hospital that way. Is not present, maybe it's better to do a debridement, then we do another debridement afterwards, because it's not easy to understand which are the vital stru structures. So which is the best period to cover a mangled hand or our sutures? These are different authors that say that it's from three to five days. I think that three to five days is a very good period. You have no inflammation, no granulation tissue, no fibrosis. We are a minimal risk of vasospasm. So I think the best time is that to cover our wound. I show you that to, to, take, to have time, you can cover the wound with the vac. We know very well that procedure. And I think it's the same that the damage control of the wound is like the damage control of orthopedic in polytrauma. Then we can have some times, we published that some, some years ago, close our wound and then cover with a flap. For these flaps, we have absolute indication and relative indication. I will show you very, very quickly, it's like a movie, absolute indication and some relative indication. Vital structures are uh, exposed. So, you know, we have to do the debridement. I repeat all things. We have to suture all things. This was a, a very bad injury done by a, mach a machine for the wool. So the revascularization with mesafinous graft uh, for with the ulnar artery, the tendon are sutured as we can. Then at the end, we cannot leave the vessels on the air and we have to cover. My preferred uh, flaps for these things is the Gracilis flap. Easy, fast, you don't lose anything if you lose the flap. Uh, for me, is the first choice if I am alone. If we are two team, I think that ATL could be a good choice. This is the closure during the emergency, during the night, and this is the results at the end. High risk of infection, debridement, second debridement, and free flap. And this is are the two concepts together. This is the index for the thumb, and at the end, you have a big hole, you need a free flap. So the spare part of the thumb for the thumb, free and uh, pedicle, the synthesis, the big hole, and another time a gracilis to cover the lava substance. And this is the results all in one procedure. You cannot come back to one patient like that. ATL in emergency, two days later, this is, I think for you is usual. Flow through flap, venous flap, this is a compulsory indication. Uh, spare part from the upper limb to give a, a better stamp to the forearm. This is a big, big venous flap to give a, a stamp that uh, can put a prosthesis. Sorry, I show you one case of lower leg, but I think that is important because hand surgeon in many, many countries, they are doing also lower leg. And these cases that I saw in a Congress many years ago, show me the possibility to do that and save many legs in, the, in my life. So you have a legs like that, you have no possibility because the score is 10, there is an avulsion, too long time of ischemia, no possibility to have a good stamp of the leg. You can bring all this big flap of the calcana region, put it back, do the flap, put the calcaneus on the tibia, turn around the skin, and if you are lucky, like in these cases, this patient came to ski 
after six months. Uh, I think that microsurgery is done by single cases. And if you saw something like that in life, you can repeat if you have a possibility. And now I close with the definitive reconstruction in failure or in impossibility to do the replantation in emergency. This is very, very difficult because it's not compulsory to do that. We can do a flap and we can do our transfer later. But we, we have some experience on that. You have a failure, you can propone to the patient uh, a finger from the foot to the hand to have two finger or one finger if you have no finger from the foot this is uh, bipodal pinch we would like to have a tripodal pinch as i told you as in these cases we did two finger from the foot always the same concept widening the first space transport the second in third position don't use more than one metatarsal for the foot this is very important and another time plastic and orthopedic concept then this is at the end this is not a beautiful hand we were lucky all was healed perfectly for first intention and this is the function of this young guy at uh, six months, one year. So this, I think, they can give to the patient a normal life. And we publish a series of 31 cases of uh, toe in emergency, and we had no major problems. So also in, the, in this field, I think that uh, the creativity, manuality, they make our work uh, really an art. And uh, all these reconstructions are directly related on the experience of the surgeon. And uh, this is really the field where the orthopedic and plastic surgery are the hand surgeon. So in replantation, we have to do to have a good indication, surgery, strict rules, rehabilitation. I didn't talk about that. I'm sorry, but it's too long. And the organization is the key. At the end of all that, I say that all these things you cannot have if you are alone. Uh, or it's very difficult. I know that Dr. Cavadas is alone, but for me it was impossible to do all that alone. The team is crucial. And I really want to thank all my old team up and all my new team in the bottom slides. I think that for young surgeon, microsurgery, enhanced surgery is really, really important. Open the mind and open mind to reconstruction. And uh, this was the program of the Italian Society of Microsurgery, five letter of uh, courses that uh, all young doctors are doing in Italy in collaboration with the Italian Society of Microsurgery. We have a beautiful advanced course of microsurgery and other many courses for that. I invite you to 224. I hope that this pandemic will finish uh, and to meet all of you in Milan for the European Congress of Microsurgery of the European Federation that I will chair there. And I thank you very much for your attention.